Sure. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. You just got back from the Alaskan cruise. I'm so glad you're back. We really missed you. Well, thank you. I had a wonderful time, but I'm glad to be home too. Decorating is always fun, and today we're going to redecorate one of our bedrooms with an ethnic flair. And we're going to have a blast with graffiti art. So stay right there. We have a great show planned for you. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Olfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican & Company, The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. Our guest has come all the way from Guatemala in Central America. Join me in welcoming Priscilla Bianchi. Welcome to Quilt Central. Thank you, Cindy. Muchas gracias. Estoy encantada de estar aquí. Thanks for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so glad your English is good because <laughs> my Spanish is, is poor. Well, we've invited you because you are such a great artistic, talented quilter, and we'd like your help in redoing one of our bedrooms in an ethnic flair. Yes, that's right. Thank you. And uh, I chose a Guatemalan flair, of course. Well, of course. And my inspiration to do all the decorating in the room is this beautiful Mayan woman's blouse. It's called a huipil. And uh, I picked out all the multicolor scheme from this to, to decorate the room with. In Guatemala, we have one of the richest textile traditions in the world. Amazing. So every time I make a quilt and I get inspired by our beautiful textiles, I always think that my work is a match made in heaven. Right. Because, uh, I, can, I combine that with American quilt making techniques and it makes for a very unique and different um, different quilt, different yes. style. Well, let me ask you too, this is, um, is it a uniform or a costume? Is this the costume that everyone would wear or? Do you have a lot of costumes? Yes. Uh, we have more than 365 oh. different costumes. Every small town or village has their own. And you can even know, just by looking at a person, you will know where they are from. That's very interesting. Because it's a distinctive costume. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's take a look at some of the quilts that you've put into the bedroom. Okay. And we'll start with the one on the bed. Tell me about the one on the bed then. On the bed we have this throw. It's made with 50% Guatemalan fabric and 50% Indonesian batik. Uh, the colors, as you can see, is the, the same color scheme as in the woman's blouse. And uh, I chose the dark fabric because one of the interesting things about uh, working with ethnic fabrics is that let the fabric sing and oh. let it be the main event. It's beautiful, and it's very beautiful with the dark colors that show off the bright colors. Exactly. Excellent. And then the one above the bed on the wall, above the That's paper. Yes, that continues the same color scheme, and it has a lot of black and white that lets your eye rest, and it also uh, organizes, I mean, make, makes a design very um, nice and orderly. I think because there's not as much black though, there is still a lot of movement and your eye wants to continue traveling. Exactly, yes. yes. Right. And if you can see those, uh, some of the blocks are log cabin blocks. I made that with a lot of scraps, but in the same like circular motion that you use for doing a, a log cabin quilt. Yeah, kind of scrappy though, huh? Yes. Nice. And then the one on the wall on the side here. This is called Nebach. And I uh, drew inspiration from the sash of the town of Nevach that has that beautiful design, that diamond, th those diamonds. And so I changed the scale, I blew it up and used the same color scheme as they do in Nevach. And I think it's... It's just, striking, mm -hmm. very striking. And this next one then? This is called Holy Week in Chichi. Uh, what 
from what us. What does that mean? <laughs> Chichi Castenango is the name of the town okay. where the center panel comes from. It's part of the woman's blouse from Chichi Castenango. Oh. And purple is the color of Holy Week, and we are a mainly Catholic country, so that has a lot of meaning and symbolism. What too. a great design idea. Good job. Okay, and then this one, I really like the colors in this. It just catches my eye. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is rainforest, and you can feel the raindrops falling on that zigzaggy yeah. way. And the green of the vegetation, it's a cool color scheme that is really um, splendid. Yeah, I really like that. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't take my eye off that one. And so, Tell me now, I can see there's a lot of Guatemalan fabric, so obviously that's where you start. That's right. Show me some yes. of these fabrics then. Um, what I do, of course, it's interesting to note that when I, st I only started quilting five years ago, and for me, being a native Guatemalan, to use this fabric was a very natural step in my development yeah. as, an, as a fiber artist. So, um, I, uh, first of all, I choose the Guatemalan. They are 50, uh, I'm sorry, they are 100% cotton. Okay. And one of the things when you mentioned in the US Guatemalan fabric, many people think of a very heavy, coarse, dull, right. thick fabric. And these are not like that. This no, is it's a, a beautiful very, weave. it's a very fine, light, even silky with a beautiful drape. Uh, because uh, I found a cooperative of men foot loom weavers. Uh, up in the highlands because I was looking for the best quality fabric to use in my own work. So these are a specialty. These may not be the type that you always find in Guatemala. This That's is a specialty right. type. Yes. Now what would you blend with them or mix with them? You like to use a lot of variety of fabrics, don't you? Yes. I love to use a lot of fabrics that have that same rustic, primitive, handmade uh -huh. quality. Make a look, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Because, for example, if you were to use um, nouveau art type rose, it really would not no, go No, it's not the this. same feeling. Yes, right. so I think it's important to keep the feeling and to keep the, the theme of the ethnic thing going. Okay. The first things that I, I, I brought to show are the batiks. The batiks are made with, uh, I think we're all familiar with them, with hot wax that they use to make the designs. Then they let the wax dry and put it in a dye bath. Mm -hmm. And the dye is usually warm, so it has this crackling effect. And one of the, the things uh, I love about them, for example, in this piece, is that you can use either side. And oh, you, will always, right? you will always get some nuance, some variety there. So it's always changing and and well, it's always beautiful. I recognize these as being the Indonesian Indonesian batiks because we right. use a lot of those here in mm -hmm. the States. But I uh, saw some other types that I'm not very familiar with. Where are these made? Do you know? These are called Wax Java Dutch. And they are made in the, what what used to be the Dutch colonies in That's Asia. That's stunningly and beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. And you get a lot of different designs, a lot of flowers. As you can see in every fabric here, you have a lot going on. Textures, you yeah, a lot. Textures, patterns, motifs, mm -hmm. uh, designs. So we'll talk about how, wh what to do with them and how to sew them afterwards. Okay, because we have a few more that I want to talk about. These are wonderful. Yes. We're at a different uh, continent altogether. This is from yes. Africa, huh? This is from Africa, and we have, again, the beautiful patterns. And the other thing that I love is the more I get into quilting, the more I have learned about textiles. Mm -hmm and how they are made and the symbolisms. So there's a lot of very interesting things to learn in this mm -hmm. topic. This is mud cloth. And it's called like that because they use mud to do the white drawings. Uh -huh, so it's mud cloth. It's yes. Beautiful. And they let the cloth dry. Yeah, and once the, the mud is really th thick and dried, then they paint it black. And so that's how you get that. Interesting. And this is very, very thick, but... But you can still use it and sew through yes, it, yeah? Yes. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to give me tips how to do that, but there's mm -hmm. one more grouping that I just love. Uh, we're familiar with the indigo dye because, of mm -hmm. course, we use that in our Levi's and a lot of, you know, uh, jeans. But here you have a Japanese one, which we're very familiar with here, but yes. I've never seen this before. What type of fabric These is that? These are Hungarian indigos. Yeah, amazing. One of the things I have discovered is that... Uh, People here, they, I mean, quilters love all of these fabrics. 
And many of them have stashes of, of the fabric they brought from Indonesia or from Java or from somewhere, some trip or something. And they don't know what to do with them. They are afraid how, um, they don't know how to use them. So that's one of the things I'm trying to. Well, show to. me some tips about actually using the fabric here. Okay. Come down over here by me. Yeah, come down here. The first thing is that these fabrics are usually a looser weave than what we are used to with mm -hmm. commercial cottons. Mm -hmm. So the first tip that is very important is whenever you sew a seam, always put the looser weave on the bottom oh. and let the feed, uh, dogs. the feed dogs do the work for you mm -hmm. because they will be unruly sometimes and will stretch and get out of place and the the commercial cotton keeps them in, in okay, it kind place. of stabilizes it yes and, and ironing do I have to do anything different to iron them yes uh, I use first a lot of steam okay and some expert ironers maybe will disagree with me but it works great okay and the first thing is that you have to iron following the thicker fabric. Okay. Like uh, away from the thicker fabric. I see, fabric. so you don't want to add bulk to the seam allowance. Exactly. Okay. And if you try to f uh, iron it the other way, I mean, it's going to be a big bump. Well, how about if you have two thick fabrics together? That's another problem that is very easily solved by opening the seams. Okay. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I mix and match all of these beautiful fabrics with commercial cottons and with plaids and checks and hand dyes and all of those other fabrics, it's because um, they keep the bulky seams under control. Right. Do you have a piece I can cut into? I want to just see if I can how it cuts. A tiny yes. little piece here. Yeah. Okay. So now, this if I was to just cut this, I just want to see if it cuts the same. And many oh, people ask like, me, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, right. If you have to mm -hmm. stabilize it, and no, you I mean you don't to have to. It. It's it's beautiful fabric. It doesn't fray. Uh, it's really. I have one more little beautiful piece with. I want to show you. Excuse me here. Um, tell me about this. Yes. It's remarkable. One of the things is that you have to listen to your fabric. Oh. And when you say that, some people will look at you with a weird look, but it's true. Uh, the fabric, uh, as I said before, has so much going on that you have to use it in your favor, like not work against it, but uh, take advantage of the color that is already there. For example, we have the aquas here, and I took the greens over here, and the magentas here. So uh, your design has to be relatively simple to yeah. work with these fabrics. You know, and let them be the main thing. You are so talented. Thank you for bringing your quilts and decorating the bedroom for us. And now let's join Tina and Janie and see how they quilted the bed throw. Today we have with us Tina Collins and she's a celebrity long arm teacher. Welcome Tina. Hi, it's great to be here. Tina and I have worked together for the last couple months and she has some very interesting background designs that she does. One that we call the Latin Lotus, right? That's right. And uh, we had a little dilemma with this Guatemalan quilt here. We had an odd shaped block. So from the little design that she did, we designed a block and put it into the Auto Sketch program. And we began quilting that block with this automated piece of equipment and so that it would be perfectly repeated every time. And Tina's been working on that. Yep. But we still have a little border piece that's not quilted. So she thought maybe we could show you what we started with, that Latin lotus, and uh, describe it as she goes, and maybe that would help you to learn to freehand a new design. Okay. I'm gonna start out just by making a little loop. We're making some little flower petals here. Nice and easy. And then I think we'll echo it and then come back with an arc. We we'll put a little swirl in there. And back, do some more arcs. Another little hook. We have to go up and fill this space in. There's some long points and we're actually building this up and we're trying to fill in our border nicely. And another little small hook and we can echo our way back over here. It has a little flowery but a flame look to it too. It's, it's just kind of a mixture. It's actually what fits that space and looks nice and I like to put a lot of curves in it. 
because it kind of takes away from the straightness of the art or of the the diagonals. And every once in a while we'll go back and we'll just do a flower and we'll let it curl back up there and down. There's a little hook. It's almost like an S curve. Back we have a C, another little curve, and we'll start all over making our flower again. It's not really echoed that much, but you seem to fit the points into a place that needs a little something. I try to save that area for the little flames and hooks. And circular movement is great. It's a nice contrast between the curves and the points. It works real well with this quilt. I can't think of anything it wouldn't work on. I think that other thing we could do with this piece of equipment is it has a memory mode on it. It does. I can actually program this to remember this exact design and I can repeat it. Over and over. every block. As soon as I go down every, every block of this border, it will repeat the same pattern that I've just done. That would be neat. It would save you a lot of time. A lot of time. And it's always perfect. It is. Uh, we really enjoy uh, that particular meander and I think that it's one that would fit on anything traditional or contemporary. You can add everything you want in it. You can put feathers in it if you want. I can put um, the peacock echo mm -hmm. out in it and it changes the entire look of it. A little heart maybe? That's right, that's right. I, I kind of adjust this meander to fit the theme of the quilt. I think that's outstanding and I think it's perfect for this particular quilt and later this quilt will be displayed in the Quilt Central Television House. That'll be great. It'll be a very special room that they're going to design. And I thank you so much for showing us that, oh, Tina. That was great. Thanks for asking me. We're back with our guest in Guatemala, Priscilla Bianchi. Hi. Hi, Cindy. This is the quilt that we had on the bed, the throw. And That's this right. is the back of it. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Yes, I have a personal philosophy on backings. To me, a quilt is like a gift. And the top is the present itself, uh, the one that you have really thought out and toiled over and really looked at every single detail. And then um, the backing is a fitting like uh, complement to the top. So many people don't even pay attention to backings, but I love to work something that will coordinate with the top. It's like the wrapping it's, paper. That's right. It's like okay. the wrapping in the present that you also take care to do it. That's right. I notice you use a lot of big pieces, and I think big pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really smart because some of the fabrics, the ethnic fabrics, are so gorgeous. You wouldn't want to chop them up into little patchwork exactly. pieces. Exactly. That's the reason why. And uh, the backing is a beautiful canvas to do that, to use those big chunks of fabric. When you're working with the hand-woven, hand-dyed fabrics like the Guatemalan fabrics, do you have to treat it or pre-wash it? Yes, you do. Especially if it's going to be used in a bed quilt that you will be mm -hmm. washing, you do need to pre-wash it because it will shrink about a five or six percent oh, yeah. and it will release a lot of the extra dye. Okay. So you better do that to avoid any problems later on. I noticed too your bindings are so perfect and I was I was shocked when I learned that you do them all on the machine. Yes. Cheater you, that's a great <laughs> idea. Show us how you do that. Okay, I try to avoid as much hand work as I can. So the first thing that I do is um, I cut my binding two and a half inches on the straight grain of the fabric. Mm -hmm. And you have to prepare it by cutting a 45 degree angle and, and ironing the, the edge of that. Okay. And then okay. you iron this in half. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the most important thing to remember in using this method is that th this is the top and this is the backing and we are going to start uh, attaching, putting, it. attaching it on the back. Oh, okay. It's opposite. Which is okay. the opposite of what mm -hmm. you usually mm -hmm. do. Uh, the other important thing is um, how to turn the corners. Okay. You get to the corner and you fold the fabric in a 45 degree angle. And then you turn this back here. And we need to mark 
the quarter yeah. of an inch seam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've already marked it, I see, but with, yes. a, with a, like a pen that washes yes, away or exactly. something. Yes, exactly, or, or a, a pencil marker mm -hmm. or something that won't show. And then you fold it back, you crease it and fold it back and mark it here. Okay. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sewing from the dot to the next dot and you're going to stop, cut your thread, flip this over and start again. Okay, I think it's great that you market the dots. So especially for beginners, it gives us a good, it gives yes. a good guideline. Yes, because when you get to the corner, it's very hard to see what you're doing. Right. So let's do the seam here, a quarter of an inch. Okay. It's important to use your walking foot because um, you already have the sandwich and the batting, so that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, there's too many layers to use a regular foot. Then it's yes, like, yeah. that's right. Okay, so we'll get to the corner here and stop right at the dot. Okay, do that here. And now comes the most exciting part of this. I love to do bindings because it gives me a sense of completion. And now you turn the binding to the front and we will do uh, the final seam. Wait, also, show me how to turn at the corner right here. How do you, yes. how do you turn that? That's all you do, it's you... almost you, backwards of what we're normally used yes. to, huh? Yes. You continue to go all the way here to the corner and then you just fold it okay, over. Okay, perfect, got it. And so it's... And, and I pin it because it, you need to keep it in place. Okay. Okay. And you sew the final seam right on the edge. If oh. you are... Um, That's a perfect job. Yes. The walking foot helps you stay steady, huh? Yes, completely. Perfect And job. if you are not sure of your... That looks beautiful. Let's see it. Oh, that's mm -hmm. gorgeous. And if you're not sure of your uh, straight seam, you can always use monofilament thread. Uh -huh, and on the backing, you will only get a little... I know that you mine silver in Guatemala. What's yes. the name of your necklace? It's a chachal. A noise maker. The <laughs> yes. next time I see you, I hope it's in Guatemala. Oh, I hope so too, Cindy. I would love to have you. Me encantaría tenerte en casa. Today we have with us Nancy Canaus, and she has another speedy project for us. Hi, Nancy. Oh, hi, Janie. This is a really bright quilt. Well, thank you. It is beautiful. This is one of those kind of dreary day kind of quilts where I just... I love color, and it just tell. brightens up your day. Uh huh. And it has like a little. Is this done with applique or? No. What I did was just use a, a fusible bonding. Is all I did with that. And I just did. What I did was it like instead of sitting and watching just watching TV, I will take it. You know, put on a piece of fabric, and then I'll just iron it down. I'll take my pencil and I'll just kind of doodle around, and then cut out these little figures on, on it. And then I cut those out, and then I'll just lay it out in different ways and add here and there and... and till you get the right look. Till I get the look that I want. Got little confetti pieces to fill in the spaces? Well, those little confetti pieces, being, you know, just your typical quilter, I had cut out these little blocks and they were too big for my spaces, so I cut them down and I didn't want to throw them away. Oh, so, trimmings. So, and then when I, after I start filling it in, I'm going, oh, it's just it's kind of empty in there. So then that's when I started adding those in there to fill in the spaces. That's so that's where thing. those came from. So I just, I use everything on that. So what I do is like what I had said that I would just, I will draw these out and then I cut them out. And then once I do that, and then I will just stick it, you know, just set it in its place where I want them. Stick them down. And, and I just stick them down. And then once I get them in there, and then I will iron it down. And then... So this is like more of an ironing project. But you have some little stitching on there, too. Right. So what I have done is, on some of these, I've just gone around and outlined on it. That's what I have done on that. So what I will do is I will just outline the design. That looks really nice. It adds quite a bit. It does. And then once you do outlining on this, you can always go inside and embellish and add to it. That looks really nice. About a quarter of an inch out. Mm -hmm. 
That's and I find it's a lot easier that way than trying to outline just right on top of the line. Because this way it really gives it you know, a little more depth to it and sometimes I'll even echo quilt around it to give it even some more dimension to it. Well, with all of our busy schedules, we sure do need something fast and easy. Oh, and something just to brighten up that corner of the house, too. Right. Well, thank you so much for showing us this project. I'm sure that this is something I'll try because I know my schedule is really tight. Well, great. Well, thank you for having me. It was interesting to see the artistic side of graffiti and on a quilt. Yes, and I love the transformation of the bedroom. Oh, it was beautiful. Thank you for joining us on Quilt Central. Next time we'll be seeing stars. Well, actually we'll be making star quilts. And be sure to watch us next time on Quilt Central. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. The fly's right fly. on your lens, Linda. It's right on your lens. I tried flying. Ow. Did you get it? What do you call it? <laughs> Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 quilting machines, precision quilting machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican & Company. The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Now you can celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8224.